My name's Arshul Ahi, hope you're well. It is Tuesday the 5th of July uh, 2016 and it is 8pm. Right, tonight I've got online very good friend of mine and business partner Justin Whitmore. Justin, are you with me? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm with you, Arsh, I'm with you. I'm not particularly well, guys. I've got man flu at the moment, so say a big R. Um, but yeah, hi Arsh, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. Well, we've got a lot of people online tonight, Justin, so what we're going to do, we're going to offer a load of value. Okay, and I think this webinar's created a bit of a spark, actually, because uh, we've called the webinar how you can make £2,000 a month of cash flow from houses you don't own, which means that this is the strategy we're going to be talking about tonight is serviced accommodation, but more importantly, you don't require a property. You don't have to own the property. Uh, you don't have to own the property in order for you to, to, to do the strategy. So we're going to keep moving on. So a very brief intro. So if you've never heard me speak before, my name's Arshil Ahi. We're in a group of 12 property companies with my business partner, Akil Ahi. We're accidental landlords and letting agents. We've, we've got, well, we own over 500, uh, well, we own a lot of properties which has well in excess of 500 odd tenants. We've got 100% rent collection record and a very high 98% occupancy rate. So if you've never met me, I'm on the left, and there's my brother, Aki. So other things that I'm involved in, I'm a speaker, author, trainer, landlord, uh, investor, letting agent, uh, franchisor, and TV celebrity. I was actually on Channel 4 last night on a program called Britain's Benefit Tenants, and if you haven't seen it, you can catch up on 4OD. So that's enough about me. So who is Justin Whitmore? So Justin, within a space of a minute or two, Give us a snapshot as to who have we got online. Okay, so I'm a, uh, I, I, people say that I'm a property investor. I'd, like, I'd rather call myself a property entrepreneur. Um, I like to find ways of, of making cash flow models from property. Um, I specialize in the uh, rent-to-rent sector, um, in HMOs and serviced accommodation. Um, ho house a large portfolio of serviced accommodation um, apartments in, in Milton Keynes uh, as, uh, alongside HMOs. Um, I also own and run a large letting agency um, which I started uh, nearly 14, it's nearly 14 years now. Um, so that's really the background of me, of, of how, I, how I work, how I do business and where I make my money. You still there, Ash? Okay, perfect. Yep. Yes, I am, mate, so, yeah. Yeah, Fantastic. and um, and and if we're just going to uh, go on to the the slide that's on on the uh, on the picture here, well, this is this is what makes me do what I do. This is my reason why, okay. Uh, and as you can see, you can see there the blonde-haired lady. That's my my beautiful wife. Uh, her name is Tori. Now Tori is the is the mastermind. She's the brains behind the apartments. Um, I'm the one who or fuels it. I'm, I'm the one who structures the deals, get the properties on, and gets them. Uh, make sure the figures work so they actually work. Um, then Tori comes along and she takes over. She dresses them. She gets them uh, working. She gets them full up, and, and she she runs the business uh, uh, like a dream. Um, and then we have the three little urchins. You can see in the bottom right hand corner there. That's Amelia, the eldest, Finlay, uh, the middle one, and Charlie May, the baby. Um, and they are my reasons why. They are my inspiration. Um, you know, they're all very different personalities. The little one is is a firecracker. The eldest one is very calm and cuddly, and and she's very academic. And then we've got Finlay, the the young man in the middle there. And as you can see, he's got his rugby kid on there. Um, he's a very very talented young man. He he plays at the Northampton. Uh, or has played at the Northampton uh, Saints Academy. Um, he's the captain of his uh, of his uh, his actual main rugby team. Uh, and he's got trophies galore coming out thing. But one of the main things about this this boy is on Saturday just gone, and I'm going to tell everyone because I'm so proud of him. On Saturday just gone, um, after years and years of training, um, since he's been a tiny, tiny little baby, um, he passed his grading as a black belt in mixed martial arts, which makes him one of the youngest in the country. Uh, as, as a mixed martial artist, uh, as a black belt, um, and this boy every single day, as, as all of them do, but he in particular gives me the inspiration because he he will 
he's not afraid to fail. Failure is not an option for him, um, so therefore it doesn't frighten him. Um, and I asked him the other week, I said to him, Finn, what's, because all belts have a meaning, I said, what's a black belt? And he just turned to me and he said, a black belt, Dad, is a white belt that never give up. And that summed everything up. So that's my reason why. And your reasons why do change, guys. You know, as you get older and you, you know, my reason why years ago was I wanted, you know, cars, I wanted this, I wanted that. And they change. You know, now my kids have come along and now I need to build a legacy to leave to these guys to make sure that they can have something to look forward to. So that's me and that's my reason why. Okay, perfect. Right, okay. So as you can see, Justin's very family-orientated guy. Uh, but more important, they're the reason that keeps him spurring on. Now, uh, what I'm going to ask you at home is what's your why? Why are you involved in property? Why are you here tonight? So if you can, in the box, just pretty much give us a good indication. Now, uh, my, well, people, some of the most common answer that people will put is financial freedom, want to spend time with the family, want to spend time playing golf or spend a lot more time on holiday. Now someone's coming straight away, I haven't seen this one for a while, they want to build a pension pot, someone's put that they want to build a legacy, freedom and money, they want to find out more, okay so Sue's come straight to point, she goes the reason why I'm here, I want to find out more about service departments and that's exactly what you're going to find out tonight. Okay, so uh, Re Rob's put that, I want to learn how to rent to rent so you can make more, no money uh, in capital gain. So you make no money in capital gains, more money in capital gains, should I say. Okay, so so quite a few people said that money is quite a big thing from this evening because once you've got money, you can buy yourself freedom. Uh, Tina's put that she wants to remotely work on SA. And, Cherry's put that want to learn all about service accommodation. So you're all in the right place because tonight we're going to make that happen. Now, uh, we've changed the content uh, massively for tonight's webinar because what we're going to do is we're going to pass the control back on to you. So here's what we're going to instead of us blurbing about what is service accommodation and how it can help you, here's what we're going to say is that you ask the questions. So we're going to go straight into. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about three, three of these guys in a second, but you ask the questions. So if you've got a question that you want to know about, about service accommodation, now is the time to ask it. Start typing away, guys, because uh, Justin is going to go through who these three guys are on screen, uh, and then we're going to start answering those questions. So, Justin, if you could tell us a little bit about who Mark, Ross, and Sarah are. Sure, absolutely. So, Ross is my... Uh, my, my main business partner. Um, he runs the Intelligent Property Academy with me. Um, but Mark is an absolute specialist in rent to rent. Um, like me, uh, myself and Mark came across each other uh, on, on the, the property journey. And Mark was the only one in, in the rent to rent sector that I felt could rival what I was doing. Um, and not only rival what I was doing, but he, he had a very different model to what I was doing as well, which was absolutely fantastic to see. Um, so we combined our joint forces together because I specialise in a certain sector of rent to rent, and he's, he he specialised in another. And people don't realise that there are so many different sectors to rent to rent, um, so many different types of, of, of stuff you can do. Um, Mark himself, though, he runs uh, remotely. Okay, he runs 130. Contractual uh, service plans, uh, so that they're, they're serviced accommodation, but they're run as uh, like a relocation specialist for contractors throughout the UK. He runs over 130 of these properties throughout the UK, from the high ends of Scotland to the bottom end of England, um, and he has specialist systems where he can run these from anywhere in the world using his iPad, his phone, or his computer. Now he does have a team of people, and I'm not going to say that he doesn't, because running 130 properties throughout the UK is going to need a team. But it, the, he, the team do not need him within the business because of the way he set it up. A very, very successful rent-to-rent -rent specialist. 
In the middle we have Ross Malnew. Now Ross is our uh, main deal sourcer. He sources us rent-to-rent -rent, uh, deals throughout the, uh, throughout the country. Um, now bearing in mind the level of rent-to-rent -rent where we are now, and bearing in mind guys it's not unachievable. Our companies itself are about eight years old now and we've created what we've created in, in just that short period. Now Ross Malnew is one of our main deal sources and he creates, he, he's the one that feeds the machine um, and he creates between 15 and 20 rent to rent deals month in month out. Um, he also works with alongside the, our, our, um, our students in helping them on patch in area uh, source and find deals um, and I have to say he, at the moment when we're sending them out to people he has a 100% hit record. It's absolutely fantastic. And then we have Sarah. Sarah started with us in the back end of last year and she came on board with me as a uh, JV partner, as one of my uh, rent to rent JV partners. I do offer JV partnerships with people. She came on board and on the 5th of December, by the 5th of January, she had sourced and found her first rent to rent and it was full. We then, she then obviously started flipping uh, and all of a sudden she started having deals coming in that she didn't know what to do with because one, they wasn't in her area, they was all over the country uh, and in fact all over the world. And she basically started to package all these deals up um, and her reason why was that when her and her husband got married, she and her husband didn't have enough money to go on holiday. And her reason, her massive reason why was to travel the world and still earn money. This month, she's just realized that reason why. And at the moment, she's in Caribbean Thailand. Um, she's literally just sourced and found her and myself two rent to rent deals. She's also working while she's in Caribbean uh, on a deal that she found over there in Thailand on a hotel resort. Um, that uh, the, the, either the owner is going to let go on, on a option type deal um, or they're very cheap and that's what she's working on at the moment. So she's traveling the world and still earning money. In the first six months of her doing this uh, flip to profit and packaging the deals up, she's earned in excess of £70,000 from sourcing and packaging rent to rent deals and service, to, uh, service accommodation. So that's the, uh, the the gang there. Okay, cool. Let's keep moving on then, Justin. So um, I was going to talk about uh, don't be a slave to the banks because the beauty about this uh, webinar that we're going to be talking about, the strategy that we're going to be talking about tonight, that you don't need to own property to get involved in the strategy that we're going to be talking about tonight. So one strategy that we are going to be discussing is how to acquire a property just by managing it on behalf of a landlord or let's call it the strategy of rent to rent but then we adapt it further to the service accommodation strategy so you utilize someone else's property for a high cash flow strategy and the reason why I say that is because I'm a firm believer that you're never financially free until you've actually paid off debt so if you're buying a property you're putting 25% deposit down you don't own that property until you've actually paid off the whole of the bank borrowing. So, and until that, you you still you've still got your tie to the bank, which means that you're never financially free. And I can say that, and I know that because I've got quite a large portfolio. Yes, I've got gearing against it, but I've geared my whole portfolio so that I know the day that I'm going to retire. My date is the 11th of November 2024, at 11:59 p.m. I've got all my portfolio on a get, um, debt repayment basis so that on the 11th of November 2025 it will be completely debt free. Now here's a quote that I found online and I think it's quite, um, quite a significant quote for me because every time I believe that if someone offers you an amazing opportunity but you're not sure you can do it, say yes then learn how to do it later. Would you agree with that guys? We've got a lot of questions in, so we're going to try and get through this. So, Justin, in simple term and within two minutes, can you yep. briefly define 
what is the service accommodation strategy? Because we'll be going through all the questions that everyone's asked so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, service accommodation strategy is basically where we take a property, whether it be an apartment, a house, um, um, any, anything really uh, to do with residential property, and we let it out um, for short term. So that could be by the night, it could be by the week, it could be by the month, or it could be you know, longer period. Um, but what we're offering is a short term flexible um, service that workmen, um, uh, contractors, holiday makers, etc., etc., can come along and are not tied into an AST or a contract. Um, they can just literally pay as you go uh, in, in, in a short term accommodation. Um, but what it means is, um, is that you obviously get paid by the night. So if you get paid by the night, that nightly price is so much more than a standard uh, night, night, a monthly rent on, a, on, let's say, a standard uh, AST. So therefore, your profits are treble, maybe quadruple the size of a standard buy-to-let for that reason. It's all about the terms. So you're paying for the privilege of being able to stop in a property maybe for two or three nights or maybe for a week or maybe for a month or you just don't know and you want sort of a monthly or weekly contract because you don't know when your your contract is finishing etc so in a nutshell that's what it is okay great so what we're going to start moving on now this is the main bulk of the meat of the webinar so we've got a number of questions Justin that people have asked so I'm going to start asking away Mm -hmm. um, let's start asking away. So Andrew's come online. Thank you for being online, Andrew. So first question: How much does it take? How much does it take to set up? So he's asking, how much does it cost to set up? Okay, right. Well, this is great, and it's a good good question. This one because it's one of my favourite ones, Andrew. Uh, and the reason we're why is because on the rent to rent strategy, it's one of the cheapest ways of setting um, uh, it up. Uh, and what I mean by that is, it, I'll give you an example. The property that I'm sitting in at the moment, if anyone has, has just had a look on Facebook, uh, you'll see a photograph of where, I, where I'm actually sitting at the moment. That particular property costs me no more than £650 to set up. Why? It's because it's a high-rise um, executive apartment 99% of high-rise executive apartments come fully furnished. Now, part of the contract or the deal that I set up with the landlord on the service accommodation of uh, uh, the rent-to-rent -rent strategy is that I will take over the property. So they already come highly furnished, most of them. You know, it's 99% of the time, they already come highly furnished. It doesn't happen all the time, but most of the time. So I would say minimum between four and six hundred pounds and six hundred and fifty pounds. Maximum, if you've got to put it in, um, depending on the spec you go to. You know, again, I think a lot. Some people can take it too personally and spend five or six thousand pounds very, very easily doing it, Andrew. However, I can show you ways of furnishing properties if you've got to furnish it from scratch for under under two thousand pounds without shadow of a doubt. So it's not an expensive, you know, the return on money is is absolutely crazy. You know, anyone's got a calculator and I can give you some figures of how much I earn. The return on investment is ridiculous. It really is. For how much money that you have you haven't got to put fifty or sixty thousand pounds in for a deposit. You've got to put virtually nothing in. Um, you know, and for the return that you'll get, you'll have all your money. You know, we I work on minimum in, maximum out. And what I mean by that is, I want my money out of that property within a maximum, and an absolute maximum of six months. In many cases, I've got all my money out within the, the first month and a half to two months. That's it, Ash. Okay, perfect. Right, okay. So, uh, going through uh, some of the other questions. We've got a lot, Justin, so we're going to have to keep each question pretty much uh, pretty much to uh, a yep. quick, five, uh, quick short answer. So, 
transport. I don't I don't rent to rent. I own all my properties and like the idea of service accommodation. My question is, what do you estimate per room to furnish? So sorry, uh, that's pretty much kind of copying what previously uh, someone has asked. But if you were to say one figure, how much do you pay to furnish a uh, pay to furnish a room? No, no, no more than well, I I can do it. No more than four hundred twenty pounds, absolutely maximum. Okay, so four hundred twenty pounds per room. Yeah, absolute maximum. Okay. So Colleen's come in and asked, well, where do you advertise for customers? Because that seems to be quite a common question here. Yeah, okay, you advertise for customers, and again, it will sound easy, but it's not easy, because you'll need to understand how to advertise. So you'll, you'll get all your bookings from booking.com, without a shadow of a doubt. Then the, the, the poorer sisters will follow up, and that will be Airbnb, TripAdvisor, uh, and, th and the, the local sites, and then your own website. Um, we have a system. We, we do we do many different strategies within finding uh, um, guests, and that will be via the the big portals and our own methods going into uh, the big big corporations and 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 look, asking for the business basically. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm just going through some of the questions. We've got a lot of questions, Justin, to get through. Good. So, uh, as he was asked, well, where do most of your bookings come from? Pretty much, um, right, okay, when, you, when we started out, all of our bookings, without a shadow of a doubt, I would say 70% of your bookings will come from booking.com, and the rest of 30% will come from uh, people like Airbnb, TripAdvisor, Expedia, last, last minute, uh, and stuff like this, um, and your own website. However, as time goes on and you start remarketing back to your clients, that will start to fizzle out. Now, I can honestly say that most of our booking.com fee at the moment, or our booking.com fees at the moment, are probably lower than anybody that I teach at the moment. And that's because we are of a certain age now. Uh, we've got in with a certain amount of uh, corporate clients which come to us direct. But for anybody starting off, uh, your 70% of your bookings will come from booking.com and the 30% will come from other smaller portals throughout the industry. Okay, fantastic. Now Justine's come in, she, uh, she's talked very specifically actually, she's talking about systems. So she's yes. talking, how do you manage the key and the cleaning? How do we what, sorry? And the check-in and check-outs. How okay, do you manage well the keys, the cleaning, the keys? Okay. Yeah, that's all done via a property management system, and obviously you, you, we, we have a person run that, um, or you could have a virtual person run that. Um, you know, stay to the end, guys, of this because uh, I've got something that I'm going to, you know, probably tell you guys about that Ash doesn't actually know about at the moment, and it will involve actually what we're speaking about now. Um, but it would be a PMS system, a property management system. We'll, we'll run that for you. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, in that risk, right, okay, so Justin's also, uh, Justine has also asked, have you got a copy of an example deal? Now, I haven't put an example of one of your essays in here, Justin, but what we can do, my friend, is I'm going to quickly uh, do guys, because we don't know what questions you're going to ask, but what, one thing that I will do, I'll just... Uh, if you bear with me, and I hope I don't crash the webinar, but we've got... <coughs> so bear with me, um, an example. Uh, There we go. So, Justin, will you just give us? Can you see? Okay, Justin. Yeah. Can you give us a? Uh, I put up okay. one of your examples in Milton Keynes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll can you just through. run us through this example? Of course I can. Yeah, absolutely. So, this one is a two-bedroom uh, apartment or duplex apartment. Um, now we we have we've set this to a minimum. This was set to a minimum of uh, three nightly lets. 
So that means that you, you can't have this anything less than three nights at £150 per night. Now, that's the, what, that's the low season rate. Uh, I would only ever give figures on a low season rate. You see everyone giving figures on high season. That's not, not sustainable, guys. If, if you get that, um, then you're, you're, not, you're not looking at the right way. You need to be working your figures out on what we call the low season rates. Now, this one um, is, is actually to one of our corporate clients. So um, I've got a client in there. Um, in fact, the, the date until November 16 um, is actually wrong. They've actually extended now into, uh, into 17. Um, so this is a corporate client that I, 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 I got. They've taken the property. They've put four, four men into the property. Um, and therefore, I was able to give them a reduced rate of £770 per week. So that's £380 per month. Now, if you look at that single let uh, tariff at the bottom, that is how much I pay for the property and how much it would get as a standard let. If, let's say if you own, because I know we've got some owners on here tonight, if you own that property, that is the difference, guys, you are seeing. So a standard rent, 950, the monthly rent that I'm getting, and this is a reduced rate, by the way, is £3,080 a month. And that is a reduced rent. Now, I have other properties like this that I then run not on a um, um, on a corporate basis like this. I run these on, on a on a on a week to week basis um, that are achieving between eighty and eighty seven percent occupancy rates, which is very very high. Um, and I work those figures. Now, if anybody's friends with me on Facebook, they would have seen last week where. Tori, my wife, saw a drop, saw a gap in the market. She saw, she was watching the occupancy rates of the area, and she saw all of a sudden a massive surge. So what she did was she put the rates up from 150 to 200 pounds a night for a minimum of a seven-day booking. Um, within 24 minutes, I believe it was, um, she'd received over a £3,000 booking. That's a £3,000 booking. Just one booking has already paid for our rent and put us in profit straight away. And that wasn't for the full month, guys. You know, anyone who wants to have a look through my photos, you'll see it. It wasn't for the full month. So we've probably we've still got nearly two weeks left where we can even push that even more. Um, so that's an example of of the uh, of the the uh, uh, a a property that we have, uh, and as you can see there, the money is is just fantastic that these these uh, this model can actually produce. Okay, perfect. Right, sorry, sorry, I had to skip between presentations there, but I hope I can get back onto our existing one. <clears throat> That's not it. So, okay, so just moving on, Justin, whilst we're waiting. Is that, um, okay, so this is quite a common question, actually, Justin. I hope you don't mind me asking it. Is uh, quite a few. See, sorry, what I should you say, what do you say? Sorry, how do you get around the property owner's mortgage restrictions? You don't really get around I anything, guys. Yeah, I can hear. You. Yeah, I can hear you now. You don't, guys. You don't get around anything, and 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 please don't think that you're going to get around anything. Um, you simply need to ask the question. Um, now, with all all of our uh, landlords that we approach, um, we you know as as any you know don't forget don't get us wrong, guys. If you think about it, you are a glorified letting agent. Now, you know, letting agents ask the landlord, "Do you have permission to let from your mortgage lender?" and the landlord will tell you yes or no. But that's as far as letting agent will go. I, we actually go one step further. We ask the landlord or landlady, do you have permission to, to let the property as a service accommodation, like what we want to do? And in the contract that they sign with us, they must um, uh, confirm that they have spoken and have permission to do so. And we also ask for the roll, uh, the roll number, uh, so we know they physically actually looked at their paperwork. They put it in. 
Now, that then is up to them guys. We can't physically, well, we're not allowed to call their, their mortgage company and ask them. Uh, we can't physically do that. And it, I'm going to revert back now to a letting agency. A letting agency will ask the owner if, dear landlord, dear, dear landlady, do you have permission to let? Yes, we do. Now, a letting agent, that is all they'll ask. They won't need to see any other proof apart from that. We actually ask the landlord to sign a document that, that tells us that he has informed his lettings company, or she has, and they do have permission. So it's not that we're getting around it, because you can't get around it. And if that landlord comes back and says, no, it won't allow me to do that, then do you know what? The deal's gone. There's nothing you can do about it, and uh, there's no way around that, unfortunately. Um, but as long as you do your due care to the landlord in telling them of their duties, it's then down to them whether they do so or not. You can't police that, unfortunately. That's a great answer, Justin, and you really justified it there, to be, uh, to be fair, my friend. You know, Thank unfortunately, you. we can only go on what they, what they tell us. You know, unfortunately, uh, so I think you've done really well there. Um, okay, so Colleen has come in, she goes, is there a limit to the number of days you can rent a service department? What do you mean, a limit? So I'm assuming she's saying, do you normally a minimum do one or a maximum. night? Do you normally do three nights, five nights? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Months, so, 15. Yeah, so so we we actually do a three day minimum. Um, now I do know companies that run a seven day minimum. I I actually know companies that run a twenty eight day minimum. Um, our minimum is three days. You could go there down the road of of making the mistake, and I've seen many companies do this, or and thinking they're getting tons and tons of bookings. Uh, are booking, booking one night minimum. Now, if you actually look at the logistics of that, you may get one night um, a week, uh, and that's booked on a Wednesday. And the reason why you might get one night a week is because you've booked it on a Wednesday, then anybody else looking for three or four days will never see your booking because that Wednesday has completely wiped your week out. Um, so never ever do one day minimums and we see it all the time and I'm like why why are you doing this because you're just losing tons and tons of money most contractors and most people coming into an area will be coming for three days or more okay they will be coming through you will not lose any money by having three day minimum at all it will only gain you money because you'll gain money and you'll also have less expense because you don't have as many turnovers. Imagine having one day booking, seven days a week. That's seven cleans a week. You know, it's going to cost you a fortune to do that. So you just need to have a minimum, I would say, of three days or longer. Okay, fantastic. So, um, so Howard's coming in goes, I live in an area where tourism is a big industry. How can I source a property? What do I say to the owner? So you have a you live in a property you live in an area that tourism is a big a big part of the business yeah 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 so and what he wants to do he wants to know what to say to the owner to be able to try and get his, their property off them okay well do exactly exactly what you know go in um, Howard and, and tell them what you're doing um, that you're going to provide uh, short term flexible uh, accommodation for. Uh, families and corporate clients. Um, you're not misleading them in any way because that will be your business, it will be families and corporate clients and one of the things that we normally do is we refer back to the landlord in how much their property is going to be looked after. So Mr. Landlord or Mrs. Land or Mrs. Landlady, we're going to be looking after the property, it's going to have weekly cleans if not daily cleans, um, it's going to be kept like a show house, so therefore, Mr. Landlord or Mrs. Landlady, it's only going to add value to your property. Can you see how that might work? So, do you see what Justin's done there? He's only added all the, he's thrown in all the benefits. He's telling them that it's going to be looked after. It's going to be looked after. It's going to be cleaned. It's going to be left like a show home. <laughs> Now, landlords, how many, how many landlords have we got online where tenants left and all they've done is just left all their rubbish behind? Then the landlord spends all the cash flow that is just generating, just on cleaning that rubbish up. So it's a different mindset. 
And that um, Tina's coming with a great question. She goes, what do you letting agents? Or have you ever managed to get a property for letting agent for this strategy? Yes, we have. And you know what? With rent to rent, this is one of the easiest ways to get properties from letting agents. One of the easiest ways. Ross went out on patch last week. He got two with, with one of his clients. Um, he got two properties straight away from one of his uh, things. If Ross will go walk into a letting agent, he will get a service apartment every single time. And the reason why is, and this is why it's so powerful as rent to rent, guys, because HMOs, you go to a letting agent, oh, I want it as a HMO, I want to let it out by the rooms. They're all automatically got their rackles up. Whereas this is so powerful because you give them the benefits of what we've just spoken about and how we've just prevented, you present it in a very similar manner to, um, to, the, uh, uh, to an agent as you would a, la a landlord. You know, you give them the benefits. It's very more difficult to give benefits to a, a reference a HMO, but a luxury apartment with high-end guests, you'll nail it every single time. As long as you've got the practice and the training, which on our on our one of our, our courses we actually we actually give live de demonstrations, um, and on the course we ask people to bring deals with them. So we actually get Ross himself to call those deals for you and just show you how easy it is to get an agent on board. On the last course we had, we had a lady called Laura. She came forward with a deal with Ross. Ross phoned it in front of the whole audience, and first of all, the, the, uh, the, the agent was really, really frosty. Now, within about 10 minutes of that phone call going on, he'd completely turned them on their back, and all of a sudden, they was throwing deals at him left, right, and center. They just carried on. Oh, we've got this property. Yeah, what about, you know, that? Yeah. And they understood what he was saying. Oh, and yeah, that one's not going to be no good for you because it's, it's not on the, the X uh, route or whatever. Uh, but we've got these two here that are going to be absolutely spot on for you. Um, so agents, once you get them on board, will just keep feeding you. Um, and with service departments, it's not a massive task to get an agent on board. Okay, fantastic. Now, uh, let's just have a quick look. So, Justine has put, how do you assess the demand in the area? Or how do you find, what's your gold mine area? Because that's a few people's asking that. Now, for the people that are already asking, Justine is actually based in Milton Keynes. Now, just so that you know, this doesn't just only work in Milton Keynes. No. Now, uh, Justine's business partner, Mark, has got properties nationwide and is now going overseas with this operation as well. Now the question that I've got to ask is so that you guys know about this, how many times have you been to a holiday destination and booked an apartment? Guess what guys, that's service accommodation. Now a few people have asked a question about how big do the room sizes need to be? Now Justin, is there any specific indication on room sizes? No, there isn't, and this is a great thing. You know, again, I refer back to HMOs. You're you're regulated by how big these things have to be on IE room sizes. Um, this doesn't have to be. You know, we, we've all been into you know a hotel where you literally slide in the door, throw your bag on the wall, and then just fall onto the bed. You know, I've been on those when I can't get anything else. There is no real minimum size. Um, however. The likelihood of the type of property you're going to be going after is going to be a half decent size anyway. But as long as you can fit one person in, I would say always go for something that can fit two people in. Um, but I, some of the apartments that we have are not just full blown one bedrooms and two bedrooms. Some of them are actually just studio apartments. Now, if we go back to hotels, what do you get in a hotel? You just get a room and a bed and a bathroom. That's all you get. That's all you get. And we are just a hotel on steroids, aren't we? We're just a bigger version of a hotel room. We've, our, our, our apartments have been down the gym, they've got a few muscles, and they, all of a sudden they've sprouted a kitchen, uh, all the facilities, a lounge, bedrooms, bathrooms, washing, you know, a utility f facilities, etc. cetera. Um, so there is no real minimum, um, because that's the type of thing you're, you're, you know, you're looking for. It's not, you're not, you're not, you're not going to go and just let a room out, you know. So just a and a studio apartment, a one bedroom apartment, two bedroom, um, is is all you need. 
Okay, so a couple of people on that point then, Justin, a couple of people have just jumped in and said, is a one bed better, better than a two bed? Uh, sorry, is a one bed better than a two bed? Um, I would always say if you, if you can, um, you, you have one bed, you, to be fair, they all make money. They all make money. Um, if you was to ask my wife, Tori, she always prefers a two bedroom. Uh, the reason why she can get more men into a two bedroom, so if we have contractors here, um, she can put four men into a two bedroom. And I'm going to sneeze, sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, man flu. Bless you. Okay. That's actual proof that I've no, got the flu. No problem. Um, so um, she would actually prefer a two bedroom, and, and we do fight over those. You know, she wants more two bedrooms, and and I'll come back with uh, with a one bedroom. So, um, but they all make money. Um, there's no pros and cons for for either. Apart from if you had a four bed, a, a two bedroom, you could if you're working by the man on a contractual base. Uh, you can put more men into a two bedroom. Okay, so Andrews, Andrews, but how do you get around the payment system? Now, just if you don't mind, I'll ask it. I'll answer this one. On, yeah. The beauty with the payment system is that user systems that have, uh, people like Booking.com, uh, etc., that have already got you get paid up front. So you don't get paid in arrears. You don't get paid once they've left. You get paid up front, you they could deposit up front, which means that you've calculated your risk. Now, Justin, is that correct? So that again, you broke up there, Ash. No, sorry, so with regards to payments, you get all your payment up front. All of my payment is up front. If you do not pay, we do not take cash, we do not take checks, we do not pay IOUs. Um, if you do not pay up front on a credit card, uh, and uh, and uh, and so on. Then you do not have the apartment. It's always payment upfront on booking. Okay, so fine. So uh, just go through. Wow, Justin, we've got a lot of questions, my friend. <laughs> okay. uh, so let's keep going. So do you put? So someone's come and put. Well, what do what do you offer? Do you, do you offer tea, coffee, sugar, cereals, soaps, and shower gels? Well, it's, uh, generally. Andrew, it's the same stuff that you would find in a hotel room. So when you go to a hotel room, you get your little shower gels and your little conditioner, uh, conditioner bottles and your lotions. That's what you get offered. Uh, we don't start making them breakfast, etc. Um, so I'm just going through again. So Rob has put, so if you had a six-bed house with shared facilities, would the model work? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I run this model. Sorry, what's the gentleman's name? Sorry, I've just deleted the question. So, okay, uh, no I think worries. it's it Rob. It okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. I run, uh, um, uh, I, I tested this originally uh, before I, I'd done anything else. I tested this with a HMO um, and it ran fantastic. And I was absolutely blown away by it. Um, and you know, we we was making as much money per room in two weeks as we was making for the month. Um, you know, um, bearing in mind the area where we are, a hotel room is a hundred plus a night during the week. So we was able to let a a room out in one of the HMOs for um, you know thirty five, uh, forty pounds a night, and, and and people they were just flying out out the door, flying out the door. Many people staying with us, you know. Workmen working around the corner, um, same as for, for sort of weeks on end. Uh, absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Um, so yes, it does work with, with those as well. In fact, that's that in a, in a okay, degree perfect. what Mark's model is throughout the UK. Okay, um, so just going through some of the questions. So, so. So Luca has asked, what's the best kind of clients? Now surely the question, that answer is, the best kind of clients is the, the client that's going to stay the longest and pay the most. Would you agree, Justin? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, but he's asked, would you agree that tourists or contractors or what would you find is the best one? That, again, all depends where you are. If you're in a tourist area, your best clients are going to be tourists. If you are in an area like me, the best clients are going to be the contractors stroke professional workers. Um, it really depends on your model uh, and the time of year and the season. Um, this is a business you've got to work, um, and, but if you work it right, it can be so, so rewarding. 
Um, but yeah, the, the best client is really the client that is for your area. If you're a tourist, it's going to be the tourists. Or a tourism area, it's going to be the tourists. If you are where I am, it's going to be the corporate Monday to Friday clients. Okay, but she's uh, Hillary's coming. She goes, aren't contractors dirty when they come back? Do carpets ruined? No, no, absolutely not. No. Um, I'll be honest with you, the contracts that we have uh, are all from overseas. They are some of the most respectful men that I've ever, ever met. Um, you know, uh, especially the, the guys from Germany, for instance. We have quite a few guys here from Germany at the moment, here for, for quite a few months. And uh, you walk into the, into the hallway, all the shoes are lined up, uh, the work boots stay, so I'm going to sneeze again in a minute, so I do apologize. The work boots stay in the vans. They try to have a, a spare um, uh, trainers or slippers that they walk to the apartment with. Um, and in fact, I've had dirtier contractors, and I mean what I mean by contractors, professional contracts, like IT contractors that leave all the rubbish on the side or whatever. Um, so never ever be put off by, by that type of individual because you'll actually find that they're probably the most respectful and probably the cleanest. Okay, Justin, sorry, we lost you there. You're back with us, my friend? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Now. Sorry, you cut yeah. out. Yeah, can out, yeah. Yeah, sorry, what uh, did, what, where did I cut out? No, no, I think we've got you just right at the end. So, um, okay. quickly, I'm quickly... Uh, <laughs> so, I think pretty much... That's all the questions. I think we've answered all the questions. What we're going to do now, Justin, is if we can, let's go through the golden rules very quickly. How to be yep. successful in service accommodation. Now, the one thing that Justin has got is that he's got a deal analysis. Now, remember, there's some people say, well, how do I figure out what my break-even is? How do I figure out what my costs are? Now, what we're going to do for tonight only, we're going to give everyone the opportunity to either acquire this or come... Uh, come with us to show you how this can work. So we've got something called the deal analysis, which is a crucial to your success. Have a look in the middle. Now people say, well, how will I figure out what my break-even is? We've got a chart which we will give you at the end of the webinar, providing that you, you come and work with us on the basis that showing you exactly what the occupancy rate is to the point of showing you that you need it will tell you to the point of where it will break even and when you will start making money. So it's a very calculated risk providing that you run it correctly. It will even tell you what the setup costs are, what, uh, to what point you will start uh, making money and give you all the variables in between. Now, I'm going to rush through these because we went through these last week. So have you ever heard the saying don't be the same, be the best. It's exactly the truth because remember, the one thing that you've got to remember is that you're competing against other service accommodation providers as well as hotels. Now, you need to be the best. You need to make sure that you've got the best reviews for people to book on because people will buy through reviews. If, you're, if you've got one negative review, that will put elements of doubt in that customer's mind which may push them on to someone else's accommodation. Now, you've got to be consistent throughout. So you've got to know who your competitors are. You've got to know what they're doing, how they're doing it. You've got to be doing more than them. You've got to be offering quality always. You've got to set up your support. So if someone comes back to you and says that they weren't happy with something, you've got to be able to show them customer care. And the attention to detail to that is key and paramount to the review that you will get afterwards. But more importantly, you've got to be consistent. And here's the attention to detail. Because uh, do you want to quickly go through this, Justin? Yep. <clears throat> Bear with me two seconds. So, <clears throat> with the attention to detail, you've got to bear with me. Let me move this a little bit so you can hear me better. Um, cleaning manuals, um, uh, dressing manuals. Um, setting up the shopping list, uh, the uh, linen suppliers, sundries, etc, uh, etc. Et now, what we do is we set up a, a manual um, that 
And what, why I say essential details? Because we take photogra photographs of everything, how the rooms look, um, how the kitchen should be set out, how the lounge should be set out, how the room should be dressed, uh, where to get bulbs, where to get the paint from, where to get the wallpaper from. So we can run this remotely. So for example, if one of our, our team uh, and we was away and a new property come live, we're about to say to them, right, okay, we need the apartment or the property to look like apartment B. Now that is the manual B, and that is how we want the apartment to look. So they know, right, it's got to have a feature wall here, it's got to have uh, um, a feature wall there, um, it's got to be dressed in, in this way and these colours. Uh, the, the, the cutlery and everything is sourced from here, and so on, just so... And, and, and we don't just, this is not just written down, this is all photographed and everything. Because I, I believe that, you know, with photographs, you can't misinterpret anything. You know, it, it's there, you look at it, okay, that's how a bed needs to be dressed, etc. And, and this is what puts us a step above everybody else, is because we have these systems in place that allows us to be able to, to do this, even when we're not here. Okay, perfect. So, uh, like I said, it is a system, uh, providing that you follow the system, it can be a hands-off operation for you. And that I'm assuming that's why you're here tonight, to understand why. So, uh, here's some of the systems that, uh, that you will be using as part of your service accommodation journey. So, Booking.com, Airbnb, TripAdvisor, Lake Silverdor, uh, and then you'll be using channel managers like Avivo, uh, sorry, Viva, Kigo, Elena, and Newbook. And we'll be also showing you how to seek corporate clients that have a mobile workforce, which gives you longer stays. Now, here's a great saying that I always put on a lot of my webinars. To succeed, you have to believe in something with such a passion that it becomes a reality. Do you agree with that? And uh, Justin, can you just tell us a little bit about this slide, if possible? Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, guys, this is just a, a clip it of uh, a certain percentage of our apartments. Um, and as you can see there, the, the dates are on the left hand side. Um, the 6th, it was a 24 hour period from the 6th of June to the 7th of June. Uh, you can see the client's names, you can see the invoice numbers. And in the middle, in the bold, you can actually see the. Um, the bookings for that 24 hour period from just a selection of our properties um, and it was £18,556 in 24 hours. Now as you can see, you can see that the, the amount that was paid, uh, that was cash in on the spot and the amount that's invoiced to the companies before they arrive. Um, so you can see guys, this is real stuff, that's a real invoice, uh, and that's a 24 hour period. Um, you know, okay, I've got a lot of properties now, but this is only a selection of the properties, but I'm just trying to show you what is possible if you make this a business. So can you see it guys, can you, can you now, um... You see the kind of level of cash flow that's involved here. Because this can work nationwide, because every town, every city is going to have something distinctly different than the next one. So some of you may have massive tourism, some of you may have massive events, some of you may have a massive workforce. And the key to it is literally accommodating them. Because not everyone wants to stop there. Uh, not everyone wants to stop there on a six month AST. Now, if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, there are two things that you must first master sales and marketing. And guess what? Both of these apply with service accommodation because you need to be able to market your accommodation in order to generate the sales. And with that in mind, both Justin and I have decided to put on a workshop being held in. Milton Keynes on the 16th and 17th of July. And now, as you can appreciate, we only have an hour with you on the evening, so we can't exactly tell you everything that you want to know. But there's still hundreds of questions that we still haven't managed to get around to answer. But 
on the weekend, what we're going to be giving you is two fully, uh, full days of proven systems, support and solutions. Enjoy positive forward cash flow and no bad debt. We're going to be showing you the operational process templates. So we're not just going to be saying, oh yeah, you can do this. We're going to be giving you the actual templates that you require for you to go out and do this, where you can then get online and offline acquisition. So we're going to be showing you the techniques as to how to get the properties. Now, this is something that no one else can offer you because what we're going to be giving you is live calls to agents to book viewings and to handle any objections that they may come across. So some, some people said, well, how will they, why would the agent give me their property when they can manage it themselves? What we're going to be showing you is how to overcome those objections. More importantly, showing you how to do your research to find your gold mine area. Now, a lot of people tonight have asked questions about legislation, so to do with insurance, to do with mortgages, to do with landlords, uh, planning, etc. We're going to be going through the whole legislation, the obligations and responsibilities so that you don't get caught short by running service accommodation illegally. But more importantly, we've got an online community support so that the, le the learning does not just end in the room. At the end of the workshop, you then get edit, added onto online community support on Facebook so that we can keep teaching you new things. So the total value of that is well in excess of six grand per person. And here's how it's going to work because we're so sure that you're going to get your value for money. If you don't, if you're not happy with it, we're going to give you a 100% money back guarantee. And all you've got to do is if you're not happy or satisfied with the content at the end of day one, all you've got to do is send us an email and I'll give you a complete refund there and then. So if you'd like to book onto the workshop, it's 16th and 17th of July. It's held at Milton Keynes at the Jury's Inn Hotel. Now, what you could do is start doing your research and you could start to compile your data on the actual hotel to see what they offer because you want to be bettering them. Here's one of the workshops that last time. Uh, again, it is at the Jury's Inn at the Milton Keynes at the 16th and 17th of July. And what we're going to be offering you, I guarantee you, by at the end of the workshop, you're going to be walking out with everything that you require to go and do this on the Monday morning. And we're so confident that we can deliver exactly what you need that we'll be giving you both my Justin and Mark's mobile numbers so that if you've got any problems you can pick up the phone to us or we can hand hold you through the whole process. Now does that sound good? Because I don't believe there's any other trainer that would give you that and we're so confident that we can get you to get this up and running in your location. So the first thing we'll be looking at as is the demand and there. What else can we tap into in that location? So is a workforce there? What other events are happening in that location? We're trying to figure out, is that your gold mine area? Does that gold mine area work? How much can we charge per room per night? What's the break even going to be in that location? Now remember there's a cutoff point for a break even point. Now Justin, luckily, has managed to fine tune his so uh, that his cutoff point or his break even is 35%. So that means that, providing that he runs it right, it's going to be 65% profit margin. Where else can you achieve that in the property sector? And if that's not, if you're not happy with any of that, what we're going to be giving you is the Service Accommodation Academy. All the templates are the management agreement template, the deal analyzer, the online progress community, the rent to rent business planner, the service accommodation setup shopping list, and the terms and conditions template so that you've got everything that you can start the very next day. And you can have the whole weekend for £1,297. So you've got it there guys, £1,297 for the whole weekend.
and just so that you know, so we're still pretty much two weekends away. So if you can't afford the whole payment all in one go, don't worry because you can spread it into two payments, but you must have paid the whole amount prior to attending the course. We accept all major credit cards and you can book online by going to arshilahi.com forward slash SA, which stands for Service Accommodation. Now, and like I said, going back to the money back guarantee, this really is a no frills and a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're not happy at the end of day one, all you've got to do is come back to us and say, okay, Ash, Justin, Mark, wasn't so sure about the content, and as a result, I'd like my money back as per your guarantee. And we'll give you your money back there and then. So what have you got to lose? Because what we want to do is turn you into exceptional individuals and also add you into the community who have become the greatest service accommodation specialist in the UK. And the beauty with service accommodation is that the demand is there. Remember, with Brexit, there's going to be more of a demand for service accommodation in the UK as people now start to focus on taking UK holidays as opposed to going abroad. As the pound weakens against other foreign currencies, it's going to become more expensive for us to go abroad. Therefore, we have to stay local. So if you're in a tourist if you're if you're in a tourist accommodation, uh, if you it's not just um, going to be that. if you're if you're in a tourist, sorry, Justin, yeah. So it's not just going to be that harsh. It's not just going to be UK-based holidays. Um, you're going to get a lot of overseas people coming back to Britain because of the the pound weakening. Um, it's going to be cheaper to holiday in Britain from America and from other places. So you're going to get a lot of overseas travel. We'll, we'll start picking up here where people are coming from overseas back to the UK for holiday because it's going to be cheaper to come back here. Okay, so uh, so Tony's put, uh, unfortunately, Arsh, I'm uh, preoccupied on another course that we can. i tell you what we will do, Tony, if you want, if you're really interested in getting involved in this deal, we will film the weekend and I will send you the recording as well as allowing you to attend a later course in the year. So for argument's sake, we're, I think we're going to be running one. The next one will be the last one of the year. I think it's going to be November. So if you if you like the thought of it, you can book on by this special price because normally the price of it is 2997 And uh, I will send you the recording so that you can catch up prior to come in on the workshop in November. So pretty much you'll get two workshops for the price of one. Now Hillary's put, is there a special price if I come with my daughter? Now Hillary, what I will do for you is that if you want to bring your daughter, I will allow you to do buy one, get one half price. Now you're going to say, well how can we do that? Well what I will do is, here's what I'll do is, so I'm going to, uh, sorry, I'm just going to go on to, let's go to Google Chrome, um, any second now, that should log in, or let's see if that's logged in. So, whilst we're waiting, I was going to say, Ash, while we're waiting for that, can I just add a couple of bits? Um, for those people that yeah, come sure. along to, yeah, for those people that come along to the <coughs> to the weekend, uh, we'll not just have the experience of learning how to do service accommodation. Um, I will actually put a, <coughs> I'll actually put a certain amount of um, uh, apartments available for that day, where I will actually, or, or that weekend where we'll actually spend uh, an hour or so touring some of my apartments so you can actually see for yourself how they run, how they're set up. Uh, we may have one of the the, the house uh, keepers down here where you can have a chat, but I can't promise that bit, 
But one thing I can promise you is a full tour of some of my apartments. Uh, and also one of the things that I do want to speak about quickly, Ash, is that anybody that does attend any of my service department training events where I know how they've been trained, uh, myself and Mark are going to be offering um, very, very soon uh, partnership programs with us where you can actually do the service departments with us. Now, um, you know, I won't be able to offer that to everybody. Um, it will be sort of on a first come, first serve basis, but they would have had, I will take nobody on um, unless I've trained them. Okay, because I need to know they've been trained to a certain standard. Um, but that is also going to be available to anybody that we train as well. So there you have it, guys. So you've got an opportunity to JV with Justin and Mark. And more importantly, you're not just coming on a standard workshop where you're going to be sat in the classroom. We're going to be taking you out to a number of uh, service accommodation units that Justin actually owns or has taken on on a rent-to-rent -rent basis so that you can see exactly how you set them up. So uh, going on, so if you were to go on to this site there, so Arshila hit one, two and three payments. So if you wanted to come on with your daughter Hillary, all you've got to do initially is go through by booking that one first and then you've got to book that one just to pay the second half price. So hopefully that works, or hopefully that really works, and you've really understood that. So whilst we're waiting, I think we've got about five minutes uh, on line, Justin. So what questions? Yeah, and also, guys, when you when you come to the day, bring your deals. If you find any deals in the meantime, before you before you arrive on the day, because most people when they book a course, they get all excited, well put that excitement to some use and, and start looking for some deals, bring them to us and, uh, and if we can get hold of that agent or get hold of that landlord on one of the days that, uh, that we're, we're all training together, you know, I'll get Ross to call them for you, you know, and, and maybe, you know, certainly on the last course and the course before that, um, we have got deals for, for clients that have been with us. Um, so, uh, and one of the clients that we taught literally wanted to do rent to rent with HMOs, but she couldn't get it to work in her area. She couldn't get the deals from the landlords or from the agents. And we looked at her model and went, okay, well, you know, your, your area is absolutely ripe for service accommodation. Why don't you do that? And that's what her and her husband did. And within a six month period, they had five service departments smashing the profits out out the water um, so and that was because we just looked at their model at a different angle to anybody else and we went okay well listen even though HMOs work in your area you have such you have such competition that and and agents are against it you're never going to get them however let's let's work it a different way still get the rent to rent working but we're going to have to change the model and that's going to be service accommodation uh, and that's what she did and absolutely flying absolutely flying now um, but we offer you know so much more you know as I say you're going to come have a look at some of the apartments for those people that were trained we're going to offer a partnership program um, you know again I can't guarantee that everybody but it will be a selected few um, and we're also going to put our heads on the block or our necks on the block where nobody else will and do, actually do live calls in front of you whether we get told to go away or we get the deal. Uh, we're not frightened because it's all real, isn't it? It's all real, even if we get told that, you know, there's no way in the world I'm going to do that. At least we've proven to you that we're not afraid of picking the phone up and making the call. But we will do our hardest to get a deal on the day if we can get hold of anybody. Okay, perfect. So, um, just a couple of people saying, when's the next available course? Have we got any dates available for that? No, not at the moment. So the, 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 the nearest one is July the 16th and 17th. And I've got a feeling the next one won't, will not be until uh, about November. Um, and guys, the reason why, why that is, is because you know, our main job is um, service accommodation, rent to rent. That's our main job. And the training is... A secondary part of that. So, you know, 
I can't run courses week in week out uh, because I, I want to focus on my businesses. Uh, we're not, you know, uh, trainers month in month out. So in fact, uh, all of August, pretty much, uh, me, the wife, and the kids are are going off to uh, to Thailand um, to uh, to spend some of that money. Um, so um, yeah. So unfortunately, guys, the next one is not going to be until probably about November, but we haven't got a set date for that one yet. So okay, can, so... Uh... Get on the July one, guys. Get on that, because you're on the, the crest of the wave. With service departments now, it's so, building at such a volume. Get on this now, get it learned, and get in front of everybody else, um, because it's taking over corporate hotel space. Never before have you seen such demand for service accommodation. Never before. Um, because all of a sudden the big corporates and even families have cottoned on to the idea that, do you know what? I have a family of five. I can't just walk into a hotel and get a family of five room. It, 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 it's crammed. It's horrible. Where I can go and get a nice two-bedroom apartment that, that will fit my wife and my three children in for really the same price as a hotel. And that is why it's picking up so much at the moment. So I would say, listen, if you've got a barbecue planned, cancel it, get it, get it on another day, get on the course, um, because there's nothing like taking the action now and why, why, why the iron's hot, you know, because it is such a hot topic at the moment and it is the crest of the wave. These, these apartments are really, really taking off now. Okay, so... Uh... Someone else has just come in and says, unfortunately, I can't get there the next weekend, but could we get the recording? Yeah, well, like I said, guys, I will have the weekend recorded. That will be sent to you privately. Uh, and then as a, as a special bonus, it's just so that you know that you get the live experience as well, we will also allow you to come in November. So, but you have to take advantage of the special offer that we're offering this evening. So it will be a full-on recording as if you were in the room so that if you can't get there for the Sunday, believe it or not, that week you will have the recording so that you can start watching it on the, uh, that week and get you up and running that week. And as, as a result, but that, would, uh, that would help you. So uh, Tony's put, can we just buy the recording? Yes, you can. And we'll allow you to do that. Unfortunately, it will be the same price because you'll still get all the documentation and we'll send you everything that you require. Uh, and so that's an option. So, guys, if you can't get here in person and you would like to record it or you, you would like to live stream the event, we can make that happen for you. But you need to let us know well in advance. So if you are to buy just a recording, when you make the booking, you need to let us know that you're not going to be there in person so that we know where to send it to. So guys, so I'm throwing that out there exactly for you. So Tony, thanks for the suggestion. Um, okay, so go through some of the other questions. So last question uh, for you is, uh, Rob's put, I've got over 50 rooms, that means 50 sets of keys. Now, first thing that I would say to you, Rob, is for a person that's got 50 rooms, she should only have one key. <laughs> and. I know that it's because. Uh, sorry, Justin, how many keys have you got? One. Well, we've got more than one key, and that's the ring. Really but but uh, yeah, the master key systems, yeah. So I, you know, I started a master key system back in I think it's two thousand and four, where all my properties, everywhere I go, just the one key. Uh, so, however, however, if if you've got. He goes, do to get over. Well, sorry. Sorry, Raj. Um, however, if you want to get past even the master key system, you can have uh, the remote key systems or, or, or locking mechanisms um, that you can fit to each room that has its own unique code. So you'll never need a key again. Uh, if it's in, if it's in, it, are we talking about? He has a house with individual rooms. Yeah. Yeah, I think he is, but I think... Yeah. That's another route you can go uh, down, I think remote, remote systems. Okay. He, he's just uh, conscious of that, he goes, that if you've got 50 check-ins and you've got to carry around 50 loads of keys, 
how would that work? No, well, you won't have to do that. Again, if he's got, you know, you can have it all set up on, on key locks. You can have remote key locks. You go into a hotel room now, um, you know, none of them have keys. They, they have a, a swipe card. Now, you can get remote locking systems now that you can, as long, they work off your internet within the property, um, and they, you have a, a remote um, key code that the, the client, and, and you as a, as, a, as, a, as a hotelier or as a service apartment provider can change those codes just from your laptop. Okay, perfect. Now, here's a, here's a great question, actually. He goes, I hope this isn't a silly question, but there's no such thing as a silly question, by the way. But uh, does this model work for people with bad credit? Now, the beauty of it, he goes, in the sense of getting properties from landlords since regular tenant uh, rentals are subject to credit checks. So, Justin, do you want to answer that? Um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, uh, again, on the, uh, on the, the, the training, we, we, we give you ways of, but don't forget, we are full-blown, as, as well as you are, Arsh, uh, we're full-blown letting agents as well. You know, so we, we can tell you the ways of how you will be able to acquire um, properties from um, uh, letting agents um, uh, we'll, because obviously we are letting agents ourselves. You know, th these are the companies we have alongside what we do. So we'll be able to tell you ways of, of getting past those credit checks um, you know, uh, and, and getting your properties. Uh, with landlords, um, do you know what? A lot of landlords won't even ask you for that to a degree now, a lot of landlords won't. It's again, it's about how you build yourself up and the opportunity that you present to the landlord. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you, out of all the ones that we've ever done direct with landlords, not one has asked to do a credit check on us. Not one. And after the first one that we had with the letting agent, and maybe the first one or two with the letting agent, where they know where, what, where, who we are, they know what we do, they'll still want to take our, their administration fee from us, but do they credit check us? No, they don't. As long as they've got their money and they know us from old and they're working with us, then they just take their administration fee and, and process it. Uh, but we, again, we'll show you ways of, of not getting around it, but we'll show you ways of, of being able to, to um, uh, work with the, the system. Okay, perfect. So, um, I'm just going through, I think, so uh, some people said, well, is it better to have a room with an ensuite? No. Um, for instance, the, the two-bedroom that I'm actually sitting at the moment uh, is a standard two-bedroom, what we call a standard. Um, it has a lounge, kitchen, uh, two bedrooms, and a bathroom. No ensuite, and then we have the, the deluxe ones that come with an ensuite. So, no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter at all. Would it help? Yes, it would help. But does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I've pretty much. I think we've pretty much covered all the questions there. If there are any other questions, guys, by all means, you can uh, come through to me after the webinar. I think Justin's on Facebook for all a short while. Justin, you're going to be doing a live broadcast? I don't know if I'm going to be doing one tonight. I, I, I don't want the... Um, we'll see. I'll just check Facebook, we'll see. But I am absolutely full of cold tonight, um, as you lot can probably hear. Um, but, um, no, I done one the other night that uh, lasted after the webinar, and lasted nearly, nearly an hour long. Um, but I'm not too sure. But I will be on there for about uh, five or ten minutes if anyone wants to come on board, ask me some questions uh, directly, ask us how to get you know uh, more questions about the weekend, etc, uh, etc. Et but I will be on there for about 10-15 minutes. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right, guys, on that note, I'd like to wish you all the very best of, uh, best of luck in your journey, regardless of what you decide to do. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Justin, have you enjoyed it? It's been awesome. Thank you very much, guys. No problem. And if there are any other questions, feel free to come through to us and let's go from there. Take care, night, guys. Good night. Good bless. Bye, -bye. See you. Bye, everyone. See you, Ashby.